We've been driving on the Alaska Highway for the past five days, all the way from Dawson Creek to where we are, about two-thirds of the way to Delta Junction. Today, we reach the last frontier, finish the Alcan, and arrive in Fairbanks, our home base for the next few days. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV. Today we're crossing back into the United States, and it is supposed to be a beautiful, if a little bit of a challenging drive. It's like they were saving the best for last, huh? I mean, as gorgeous as it's been so far, this has definitely been the best part. The first time I came to Alaska, I noticed something different about the clouds. And it could be me, but I do sense something different. A shallow look, if you will. And you know what that means, right? We must be getting close to Alaska. We are almost 61 degrees of latitude north here, so almost the same latitude as Anchorage. Just amazing. Amazing scenery. Here we are arriving at Haines Junction. Were we to continue straight, we would end up in Haines, on the Alaska Panhandle. Like all the other towns on the Panhandle, it is not connected by road to the rest of Alaska, so you either have to take the Marine Highway, which is basically ferries, very expensive ferries, or drive 147 miles to here, and then take the Alcan. I think we're going to save Haines and other Panhandle towns for a future trip. Although, let me tell you, I am tempted. There it is, Kluwani Lake. There's supposed to be really good boon docking around it. Here, this looks like a good spot. Well, yeah, this would have worked as a great boondocking spot for last night. I mean, it's not even marked like as a rest area or anything like that. It's just um, no signs saying anything about no overnight parking. And we're right here on the shore of Kluwani Lake. The mosquitoes are getting a little bit annoying at this point in the trip, but we did take a look at this place. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, on the way back, we're coming back this way. On the way back, we're definitely boondocking here. Yeah, this is such a beautiful lake. We've been told the next section of road coming up from Destruction Bay to Tok Alaska is supposed to be the worst part. So I'm expecting potholes, frost heaves, and washboard. 
It is going to be a grueling ride for the next 225 miles. This is just gorgeous. I think Gluani Lake here has been the most beautiful one on the whole Alcan. Yet another possible boondocking spot here on the right. Destruction Bay. Well, as I said, according to everyone, this is where it gets real. So it begins. I didn't really know what a frost heave was until I hit the first one. And some of them are kind of hard to detect, so they can catch you off guard. And if you're coming too fast, it is a roller coaster ride, and not in a good way. Ooh, that was a good one. Some of them are marked, but some are not. I don't think it shows all that well on camera, but we're really bouncing on some of this. Even if it is not the most pleasant drive, the scenery certainly makes up for it. Well, it was bound to happen. Now we have some gravel, some washboard and we're back on pavement the Alaska Highway is definitely one of those drives that doesn't throw everything at you at once it is such a long drive that you get to see a great variety of scenery and I think it gets progressively better the closer you get to Alaska Wow, yeehaw! Wow, yeehaw again! <laughs> and now we've got potholes. Well, this section of the road is definitely living up to its reputation. It's been pretty bad. I hope, you know, everything survived back there. That's my only hope. Probably one can open. Eventually we make it to Beaver Creek, Canada's most westerly community. Let's refuel one last time, even though we're just a few miles from the border and gas in Alaska will be cheaper, but I'd rather be on the safe side.
right, that road was really rough, so let's see if everything survived in here. It looks good at first sight. Yeah, for the most part. It is Canada's most westerly community. Who would have thought? That we're leaving the great land of Canada. Well, actually, not quite yet. Canadian Customs is right here outside of town, but we still have 36 more kilometers until we reach the actual border with the USA. Road work 30 miles. Miles! We're back on the Imperial system. It is no longer metric. There's a sign saying we're entering a different time zone. Alaska time, that is. Coming up, the iconic sign. A little more crowded than I was expecting, but I'm sure we'll be able to take that iconic picture. The crease on the pavement must be the actual border. It is a momentous occasion. We have made it to Alaska. We're back in the USA. Now we have to take that requisite picture. Oh, so many stickers on the back. I always wanted to, to sit down in two countries at the same time. <laughs> and I guess this is the, the official market marker. This unfortified boundary line between the Dominion of the Canada and the United States of America. Cool. Yep. Alaska. The last frontier. These are the voyages of Mini Tini 4. It's continuing mission to explore new beautiful places. To seek out new experiences. Boldly go where no mini tinny has gone before. Now for the actual border crossing. Totally different set of questions compared to going into Canada. Coming back home, they mostly cared about eggs, poultry, that kind of thing. I did turn off the camera just in case. Road conditions are even worse over here. All of a sudden, we're on good pavement. Here's the Tetlin Refuge Visitor Center. Let's take a break. There are many things to do here, including some hikes, but I just came for the view. Time to take a break. In the distance, we can see the peaks of the Wrangell St. Elias National Park and Preserve. Continue. Here's a larger rest area, so let's break for lunch. Well, we had a quick TV dinner, lunch, and now we continue towards Toke. I, I believe that's how it is pronounced. Beautiful mountains in the distance. I don't know if it is me, but the clouds are definitely different up here. They seem like more shallow, you know? I don't know. Maybe it is me. Oh no, more construction.
eventually the pilot car showed up. I'm sure it is going to be great when they're done, but right now it is a grueling drive. mountains. Whew, well, I think this is where we're gonna call it. This is a boat ramp. There's nobody here. There's someone. A truck camper. I don't know. Um, anyway, we lost one of our bumper caps. I mean, that, that road, uh, that road was rough. Especially the, the, the last... Uh, Especially the Alaska portion of the of the Alcan, as we got into Alaska, it's uh, very very uneven, very you know, lots of construction and <laughs> well, you saw it. Hopefully, now I'm gonna I'm gonna see if uh, if I find out if we're allowed to overnight here. Well, I see no signage, and I just uh, spoke to the young couple. I believe they are the ones in the truck camper. And, they seem to be staying too, so he's gonna walk here. I mean, there's a gate, but I am assuming they don't close it at night. So great to finally be in Alaska. It is time for another RV cooking show, and we bought some Ukrainian garlic sausage, and we're gonna slice that. It is kind of dry, so let's add some oil. Frozen onions, frozen peppers, keeping it simple while boondocking. Salt, cayenne pepper, smoked paprika. I think it could use more onions. And camp mix seasoning. A little bit of cooking wine. Mmm, it's gonna be good. Bon appetit! Ukrainian sausages. Alright, let's go on a little walk. Well, we're gonna see if we can walk on that bridge, if it is safe, but... I wanted to give you a quick fact here. Here in the Tok, Alaska area. Sunset is gonna be at 11.46 p.m. And sunrise is at 3.17 a.m., so... I mean, it's never really gonna get dark. I'm gonna see if I can stay awake to show you. Or maybe I'll leave the camera on the roof to do it a time lapse. But yeah, it's uh, we're truly now in the land of the midnight sun. The flowers are blooming. And it's such a beautiful day today. It's about 70 degrees, perfect weather. And right now it's what? It's already 7 p.m. and the sun looks like it is three. Now, the flowers are blooming in Alaska. Tomorrow, we're driving towards those mountains, which, by the way, here we are about 10 miles east of Tok. Just amazing. Here's the Tetlin River. Thank you.
morning, morning for the most part. We're getting ready to depart towards Toke and, uh, and Delta Junction. But first, let's just take a quick hike across the road here. Yeah, because I saw something. Take a look at those mountains. I mean, we're going in that general direction next. Yeah, amazing looking mountains. Which, by the way, we're getting pretty decent solar here. Um, but we're so far north, you know, the sun is at such an angle that, uh, you know, we're probably getting 200 watts maximum, which is about 50% of our uh, solar capacity, which barely keeps up with the refrigerator, Starlink, and the computers. So, yeah, we're, we're down to, to about 15%, actually. So, were we to... Um, continue boondocking tonight, which probably not. We're gonna have to run that generator at some point. And yeah, this seems to be the old road because I think what I see it here at the end are the ruins of an old bridge. So let's check it out. I just can't get over how beautiful those mountains look. And we might start a tradition here in Alaska, something I might call the mosquito report. Yeah, the mosquitoes are getting worse and they're getting inside the rig somewhere. I don't know how, because I don't see any way for them to go in, but they're going in. They're not um, utterly aggressive. You know, they just, they're kind of, what's the word? Lethargic would be a word, but the quantity, there's a lot of them. Right now, you know, as I walk, but if I stop for a split second, you know, they start swarming. So, uh, I hear they're gonna get progressively worse, so it's just something we're gonna have to deal with, right? They call it the National Bird of Alaska. seems like this used to be an old bridge that no longer is. The remains of an old bridge and that's the other end over there. And that's all there is to it. We saw someone here hanging out yesterday. So we were like, ah, let's see what, what that looks like. Look at those mountains, man. It's like... I'm in love. I'm in love with Alaska already. Quick lunch and off we go. Here we are, Toke, Alaska, population 1,243, the first town of any size we encounter in Alaska. There's a supermarket, post office, visitor center, flight seeing tours, but I see free car wash with Philip, so let's do that. Not a whole lot of pressure on this side, but hey, it is better than nothing. we've got more road construction. There's nothing we can do but hang tight and hope nothing gets damaged in the trailer with all the vibration. Those mountains, though. Now 
now crossing the Robertson River. Is that ice on the river? I believe it is. It is definitely ice. It's a boreal forest. get over all these views of the Alaska range. Most of the drive looks like this though. We have a reservation for tomorrow in Fairbanks, we're actually gonna stay there for almost a week, so I figured we would stay at Delta Junction just one night, relatively close, and there is an RV park, but it is almost completely empty. There is no one at the office, and to be honest, the place doesn't look all that appealing, so let's continue towards the end of the Alaska Highway. This is it. This is the Visitor Center. Well, we've made it to Delta Junction, a town that is famous for one thing. And only one thing, well, besides, besides, besides the mosquitoes, which are pretty epic in this area. This is the northern terminus of the Alcan Highway. So a couple of days ago, we were uh, in Dawson Creek, not the TV series, but the town in, in, the, in, in British Columbia, which is mile marker zero, the beginning. Well, this is mile 1422, the end of our epic journey to the last frontier. Now we're gonna spend about a month and a half here in Alaska, but I thought this would be a, a great momentous occasion. Well, these devices remind me of the Alieska pipeline. And there's not much else to do here on a Monday. There's a brewery, but it is closed, so we're going to drive 22 miles south on the Richardson Highway to take a look at the Alieska Pipeline. I had heard the Richardson Highway was beautiful, and let me tell you, it does not disappoint. Isn't this like the most gorgeous scenery? And this is like the beginning of Alaska, right? I don't think we've gotten to the best part yet. Actually, it is hard to imagine could get much better than this. And here we are. Here we go, our first view of the Alaska Pipeline. Of course, we'll see a lot more of it when we drive the Dalton Highway in a few days. The pipeline is 800 miles long and it goes from the oil fields in Prudhoe Bay by the Arctic Ocean to Valdez in the south. It was built between 1975 and 1977 with great difficulty because of the extreme cold, isolated terrain, and building on permafrost. These pipes are called thermosiphons. They conduct heat from the oil to the fins at the top of the pipes in order to avoid thawing the permafrost. Here are some facts, and very soon we'll be going all the way from Fairbanks to Prudhoe Bay. Can't wait. Those are almost impossibly beautiful mountains. It almost looks fake. I am so happy to finally be in Alaska. Here we moved a little farther north. Gorgeous, just gorgeous, looking southwest here, 
We can see the pipeline and the Delta River far in the distance. We continue and keep your eyes peeled because here on the right we have a moose, a lone moose on the fringes of the forest. Check out the pipeline on the right going over the Tanana River. Now here's the dilemma. Where are we going to stay tonight? There are several state parks along Alaska Highway 2. Some seem very nice actually, but they are all wooded. And tomorrow Tuesday we do need to have internet for work. So we either have to have good cell phone signal or a clear view of the sky. So I called the KOA in Fairbanks and left him a message asking if we can arrive perhaps a day early. Hopefully we'll get an answer soon. Also our battery is running low and I don't really feel like cranking up the generator, so full hookups would be nice. Can you believe we are a whole day ahead of schedule? That's unheard of for us. But I did add a couple of buffer days to the plan here and there to allow for serendipity to take a hand at the wheel. Actually, this might work as a boom docking possibility for tonight. It is next to a body of water, no trees overhead. Yeah, this might work. Just as we're getting settled, we get a call back from the KOA, so to Fairbanks we go. Fairbanks is going to be our home base for the next week. There are certain housekeeping items that need to be done, like getting an oil change and finally checking that tire that was losing air. I need a haircut. And there's of course the Midnight Sun Festival, China Hot Springs, Pioneer Park, the Museum of the North, North Pole. Yeah, there's a town actually called North Pole. And then from Fairbanks we take off on the greatest adventure the Dalton Highway, to the northernmost point you can drive to on the American continent. But most of that will be on the next episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Riding in